The selector thing um, is because I have kind of states um, of uh, this. In this case, it's kind of like a if statement. The basics of a selector is it outputs stuff from one of many channels. So if you have a load of channels, it will output stuff from one of these channels. It's similar to a randomizer, but very similarly. Uh, but this one chooses a random um, one to output to, and this one doesn't, and it has some kind of extra features. You can actually take the active port and wire that into the active port of a selector, and then it would work. This, this would randomize this effectively. Um, so, like if I. Let's just away from the other logic so it's not confusing anyone so every time this receives a new signal effectively it random oh let's look at that one it uh, picks up another random one so every time I send it an on or a one or a non-zero I guess it randomizes and chooses a different one to send when this is lit it's sending out a one to that thing um, it has active port, which is the number from the top, uh, which is useful for things. But it starts at zero because that's a a programming computery way of doing things. So A is zero, B is one, and so on. So if you turn it up to ten, then you get a, a number from zero to nine. That's how people are using it to generate uh, like um, floats and longer numbers. Uh, but that means you can stick that into that, which sets the same thing here, 0, 1, 2, going down. So then, so this is sending a signal to randomize. So they're both showing the same channel being active every time. Um, which is kind of pointless, but it means you can like um you can set you can in testing particularly you can like uh, turn this randomization off um and instead of like connecting that there you can use a value slider so if I make that long enough so we can get to the higher numbers and plug that into the active port which sets the channel then I can just set it with that so it saves saves time rather than like starting and restarting so that the randomizer chooses a different one until you get the, the one you're actually looking for uh, then you can use this to set it to whichever one you want and the wires will just go into here and it won't care where the number comes from that sets that. So it can be useful t for testing. Um, I guess you can use a signal generator as well. If you put it to range between uh, 0 and 9, which again you can use a signal manipulator to kind of expand that range yeah it's just kind of changing with that so if you go that that it's giving you a random number and it's setting it to different things like that uh, I'd actually probably want to set this to 10 otherwise it will be really rare that the bottom one will be selected because because it floors it, so a uh, 9.2 becomes a 9. Um, so anything that's 9 to 10 will become a 9 and go to this position. Uh, but all the but it, if you just go to 9, then it would just have to be exactly 9 to get to that position. So that would be that. But what I was saying was, 
that's how a selector works. Um, but because you can, so it's good for states and things where you have like, first do this. Once that's finished, then move it on. I should probably show you that bit. So when you send a signal to next output, it will move oh, with time running. It will move to the next output. And when it gets to the end, it will loop around to the beginning. And same for previous output. Um, so it's good for like do the A stuff by powering on a chip that does all the A stuff. And then after that's finished, go to the next step and now do all the B stuff because there's a B chip and that, that powers the B chip. Something like that. Uh, and, and the way I'm using it here is like an if statement. Um, in programming, which may or may not mean anything to you. Uh, but it means it's um, like if such and such is true, then do one thing. Um, if it's not true, then do another thing. Or like if it's receiving a signal from um, a number or a switch, then do one thing or do another thing. So probably the easiest way is I just show you that. I don't know why it goes X for that because it doesn't. I don't think it does anything. Um, so a switch, if you didn't know, let's display its number by plugging it in. Um, just sends one of two numbers, and those numbers are set here. So if I put it to 5.7, then when I turn it on, oh, that's, I've got to expand that range. Make sure you're seeing it. Then it will send 5.7 when it's on. And if I set that to anything, you can only set that to below 5.7. If I send that to whatever, then it's sending whatever when it's off. Um, so normally, by default, you just want it sending a 0 or a 1. Um, but you're sending that to this, which means when it's a 0, it's in that state. When it's a 1, it's in that state. So that's a really easy way of having an if statement. So, um, so what I'm actually doing here is I'm powering this, the number of sides on, uh, so that it sends a non-zero number because if it's zero, that it, it doesn't make any sense. So, so, uh, yeah, so if I send a zero, I just want to output a zero still, which is what this does. So um, this is sending a six, so six is coming in here, setting this position. So if it, it was like that, then it would go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, if I turn it on, so it goes to that position. Um, but if it's beyond the numbers, that it has the positions that it is available, then it just goes to the highest one. So that'll go to the highest one. 